up, Brian? We're live. Hello. How are you doing? I'm great. How are yeah, you? Doing good. Well, one of my favorite things, by the way, is before we start these shows, seeing like our guests and other panelists, like kind of like digging into the song. Like it's a good little song. I like it. I like it. How are you doing, Brian? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Why don't you, why don't I'm just you coming like, down from hearing that song. So are you? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a great song. Uh, is, is free royalty free YouTube music? Uh, yes. YouTube Studio. You can get it there. Just just hunt for it. Anyway, uh, Brian, why don't you tell everybody what we're here for? Tell the PCP Army what, what, what they're in store for, even though the uh, title of the video tells them. Well, yeah, we're here to uh, uh, we get a chance to talk to uh, John Lees and Alex Cormack about their upcoming book. i um, very excited uh, to see this book come out. And uh, and uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, we're here to watch them uh, help get us pump, more pumped up. Yeah, right. <clears throat> Because me and me and Brian have read the first issue of this book, Crimson Cage, which if you don't know, by the way, real quick, before we bring him in, territorial wrestling back in the 80s meets Shakespeare's Macbeth. Like, that's that's the crossover we've all been wanting, right? And like, <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm kind of joking, but I'm serious as hell. This book was well, freaking awesome, man. <laughs> yeah, we may not have known that's what we were wanting, but we definitely did want it. Exactly. And it's not always what we, we say we want, but what we what we need, right? right. And, and these, these creators bring us what we need. So let's welcome back John Lees, writer extraordinaire, and amazing, an amazing talent in this industry, illustrator extraordinaire, Alex Cormack. Everybody, throw out your stations. Sure, yeah. Hey, how you doing? I'm great, thank you. How you doing? <laughs> That's good. good to see you again, John. Glad Hi, to see you. Thanks for having me back. And yeah. I'm really up, and what I'm really happy about is that um, you managed to get in that introduction that Alex always insists on, like an amazing talent in the <laughs> comics industry. <laughs> <laughs> he gets very he always in and and that. That. People forget about it. And I'm just like, no, it's I need to hear extraordinaire. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's true. It's true. Big fan. So, you know, we've had we've had John on the show last uh, like in January. So like, congratulations to all of us. We've made it almost through another year. So that's yeah. good. That's nice. And uh, <laughs> um, but Alex. This is your first time on the show. Thank you for being here. We, we've had Rich. We've had John. Now we're bringing you in with John. This is the first time we've actually had a writer artist, aside from like friends of mine. So that's like oh, wow. it's really, really <laughs> exciting. Oh, really gosh. exciting. Yeah. Hey, well, I'm excited to be here. This is great. Thank, well, you. thank you. Big fan yeah. of your work. Road of Bones. Sea of Sorrows. Amazing works. Sync. I reread oh. Sync Volume 1 this morning, and I still feel dirty. Right, like I feel like I cut myself <laughs> reading that book. So I'm gonna have to get it looked at, see if it's infected my brain or something. But I, I love this book. So, Alex, why don't you tell everybody real quick how you got into comics? Like, what 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 brought you into this crazy industry? Uh, well, yeah, I'll say. Um, well, I after college and all that, I went to art school, and uh, I actually wanted to be an animator, and I tried my hand at doing animation, and um, uh. I contacted every single English speaking uh, studio in the world. I got hired by two, both studios like, uh, like died on me, like in a, inside of a week. Uh, I was going to do like the space uh, speed racer, like character designs. If uh, that movie was a hit, but it wasn't. So I was doing, um, I was trying to do animation for a while. Uh, I did a couple of my own movies and it got to a point that I realized that doing the storyboards is what I really dug doing. And I was like, well, there's not much difference between this and doing a comic book. And I always like comics and all that. And uh, so I was like, all right, I'll, you know, put animation aside and I'll try comic books. And I got a job here. I got a job there. One thing led to another and still doing it. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. What, what got you into uh, like reading comics? Oh, um, it's my brother. Yeah, okay. I had, uh, I have uh, my brother's uh, five years old or so. Uh, oh, and if you look behind me, there's my boy. <laughs> hey there. Yep. And there's the next generation. Hi. There we go. Hi. All right. Ear, earmuff. I have to go potty. Oh. <laughs> Did you get that on the show? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can, I can take over. 
I, I got priorities, so uh, as long as as far as first lines go, that's the classic. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be right back, guys. Excuse me, Sam. Yep. Yeah, go for it. That was great. That was great. I was about to be like earmuff yep. protocols is, is in session, Robbie. You got to remember this. Okay. All right. I actually heard that his um, son was going to be like at home today, and I said uh, my idea was that when we first came on, I said we should put like Danny on and have him pretend to be you. And we'll just pretend that Alex is a child genius, you know, a prodigy. <laughs> Well, I've seen Alice on other shows. Core. I've seen Alice on other shows, so I, I, I would have been like, "What is this a Benjamin Button scenario going on? What's going on?" Here? <laughs> this guy's like Tom Brady. <clears throat> so, John, how you been? How you doing? Let's talk. Yeah, about I've been this. great. Like all things considered, like you know, like it's what, been maybe about a year or so since we last talked, a little bit less than that, maybe. But yeah, no, things have been going well. Like I, I feel like I've spent this entire year just like waiting for like these books to be announced. Like I knew they were coming, but I didn't know when they'd be coming. And like, I finally found out they were both coming out like in the same month. So Andy's back. I'm back. Yep. He's, he's on, he's on the potty. (laughs) Uh, Yep. Yeah. This is one of those, uh, he was at school and then they sent him home because he had a runny nose. And so I'm like, well, I got this thing I'm doing this afternoon. And I said, all right, Listen, we're doing this. You can't come in. Just hang out. I put like a Spider-Man cartoon on for him. I gave him a pencil and paper to draw. I'm like, all right, just stay in there and I'll see you a little bit. And yeah, and two you seconds. Should, you should have chosen into the Spider-Verse, then he would yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my God. That's uh, <laughs> it's like on a loop all the time at the house. Well, when you gotta uh, go, you gotta, you gotta go. go. You gotta go. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, yeah. We, we don't know. <laughs> I mean, like that's what I say during a panel. You know, I need to go and it works every time. <laughs> you also said potty. It was very yeah, weird. Just, it was very just like, he's, he's enough, and I'm like, got to go potty. <laughs> <laughs> this is already one of the best shows we've ever done. So I don't know if we're going to be able to top this. Y'all, see you next time. Y'all have a good one. Yeah, we're done. We're done. Good night. <laughs> Buy the book. It's good. All right. Well, okay. Last time that John was here, he mentioned that. Of course, because we we every time John we talk to John we we pester him. When's when's more sync coming, right? Yeah. And and he was talking about that, but he was like, you know, me and Alex got another project that's not announced yet, but hopefully it'll be announced soon. And I'm assuming that was Crimson Cage. Yeah, yeah. So well, this yeah. this this book I read the first issue, and so is Brian. This book blew me away. Like, okay, so first of all, we found yes. out that of course John's a huge wrestling fan. Alex, are you a wrestling fan? I I'm not as big as uh, John is. So it was so it kind of goes back to the. Uh, what you were asking me before I had to deal with, <laughs> with how to help my son out with a potty. Um, so when I started looking at comic books, it was all my older brother. He always had like the, like all those like late 80, early nineties, uh, like pre image guys books everywhere. Right. So, um, and at the same time, he was a huge wrestling fan. So that was also thrust upon me at the same time. So, it was, so in my head, when we started doing this comic, I was like, oh, this is going to be the long lost comic for my brother, basically, because these are like the two things he hammered into my head in my entire life. Um, But yeah, up to about 1995, and that's because my brother went to college. uh, I I was a big wrestling fan up till then. Then he left. Then there was nobody kind of forcing wrestling on anybody else. So like once like NWO started, once all that time, one like all this type of stuff, uh, I missed that generation. I got up to... uh, like right as uh, Bret Hart and um, uh, Shawn Michaels, like Bret Hart kind of got like screwed in that whole thing. And that was kind of like where I stopped. <laughs> so when John sent the script, I hadn't looked at any wrestling stuff forever. And it was just like, it all like started flooding back. And he started like dropping names. Like he mentioned like Sensational Sherry, which I haven't thought of since I was like in third grade. And I was like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I've been enjoying the deep cuts and seeing all this stuff yeah. like with the rest of the creative team like with each issue like I sent to Alex and to Hassan the letter like a little like care package of like you know matches to watch and segments yep. to yep. watch my right, to get you in the mood you know I love it I bet how Haas was like yeah, dude I'm just the letterer I don't need to I don't, why are you why are you barrage yeah, well, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will say like you know just to give him his flowers here like Haas has been like an amazing contributor to this book. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. like one, he's a great letter. Like, I wanted to work with him as a letterer because I've been a fan of the letter and he's done for a long time. But um, working on the book, like first with the pitch package you put together, 
Mm. I think a big part of the fact that this book is getting made now is because it was like one of the best pitch packages like I've seen for anybody. It was yeah. all done in the style of a wrestling card, like you know all the character bios and things. And oh. like, and he like you know, and he's been getting really into wrestling lately as well. Like you know, so it's kind of like a bit of like a wrestling fan kind of team going on. <laughs> That's what happens. You get you get you're like, hey, check out these matches, check out this, and people become wrestling fans. It's it's crazy. Oh. I've always said, I used to say this back in the 90s, I was like, wrestling is like comic books. It's like superhero comics. Sure, you got yeah. good guys, you got bad guys, they're wearing spandex, yeah, you got crazy trail, outfits, like, crazy characters. Yeah. 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 yeah like, there's, there's all kinds of like different kind of parallels you go into, which could be a whole podcast, that essay in itself, yeah. you know, <laughs> lining up all the kind of ways, all the, you know, the industries even align as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> See, Slots here yeah. says, uh, he thought your son said he had to go to the party tonight. And oh, yeah, so that'd like, be, yeah, uh, yeah it's <laughs> yeah, it's PCP. It's a party party. It's a party I'm party. I'm ready to party. I, party I can't party. wait. To, uh, you got to keep this episode up until he's at least like 14, so I can be like, "Hey, yeah. look at this." Uh-huh. Hey, yeah, as long that. as YouTube's yeah. around, this will be up. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'll be like diving into the, this footage, yeah. being like, "This is what America." Oh, uh, the poor yeah, just with, he's, like, he's going to prom or something. You can bring yeah, middle school rolls around and it's just like, "Pop, you got you got to do something about I'll this." I'll clip it out and send it to you. That's what I'll do. Like, I'll clip it out and send it to you, so you can just use it, do whatever you want, man. Put it in every birthday card, graduation, oh. wedding night. Like, come on, let's just do all of it. See, my my mom still tells this story um, about like when I was like a little tot, like you know, like like she was a so she was a teacher, she's retired now. Um, and at one point, like, you know, she for a wee while she had to bring me like into school with her. So I just kind of like hang around the nursery or whatever. And at one point it was an assembly, and like this time she was taking the assembly, so she was up in the stage, like, you know, doing like the presentation to the whole school. And then from like in the audience, she heard this big voice of like, you know, like you know, like one or two year old John going like, oh, "Mom, Mom, I've got a bogey," and I picked my nose, and I was holding my hand up, and I was walking past all these school kids, and like, ah, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I walked up onto the stage to get her to clean this bogey up for me. So that's just what I've always heard for that, you know. So I'm sure this can be no like that version for Danny. Hell yeah! yeah. All right, you what are you doing? You got a bogey? Right. Potty time and boogies aside, let's. Uh, yeah, let's, this is. Let's, let's talk about it. Who wants to talk about comics? Let's talk John, about tell us what the book is about. Crimson Cage. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. yeah Crimson so, the Crimson Cage, Cage, Cage is that like, you did a really good job um, setting it up and teeing it up. It is a retelling of William Shakespeare's Macbeth set against the backdrop of the 1980s Southern pro wrestling territories. And the kind of genesis of the idea is yes, like, you know, I'm a big wrestling fan and i've wanted to do like a wrestling comic and specifically a comic set like in the 80s in the territory system like going back to probably you could go back to the time i was doing the standard in 2010 2011 i was kind of coming up with ideas and like you know plans and drafts for something but i just didn't have a hook then at the same time like I'm kind of obsessed, but like I love Shakespeare in general, and I studied. I went. And I studied Shakespeare in university, you know. But I'm particularly like, you know, I'm obsessed with like Macbeth. Like I've seen all the different film adaptations. Like Throne of Blood is one of my favourite movies. I think I actually sent Alex like the yeah, Blu-ray yeah. Blu- for Christmas it's when we started awesome. working on this together. Like you know, watch this movie. Um, <laughs> and, and so I had this. So like I had this idea in my head of like. Oh, I'd love to do like Matty comic Beth, like I bet you know what like, is what Throne of Blood does, which is a different script, um, a different setting, but the kind of like structure of the story applied in a new way. And I thought, what would my version of that be? Then I took that and I took the wrestling idea and it kind of like clicked together. And like for me, um, I kind of feel like I mean I know my strengths like as a writer. I think I'm pretty good at writing, but like you know, and it, like one thing I'm not good at is like pitching. Sometimes when I'm pitching a book, I can feel myself like it's like some kind of like bad stand-up comic who's dying on stage and having to explain this. And I you know this bit happens here, and then, oh, I forgot to mention like this from earlier on. You know, <laughs> and that's like what my pictures and all my. And generally, I like to think is like normally like my my, my kind of thing is. My books aren't good pitches, but like if you read the comic, you know you'll get it. But this is one of the, the first instances where I thought, like in one line, like you know, you know Shakespeare, like you know Macbeth, like in wrestling, like instantly, like you know, I thought that you know, like people know what they're getting from that. And I thought, I've finally got something that's a good pitch, you know. And you can, like, you know, and you can tell, like, some folks like, oh no, but you can tell, like, when you seen the light in people's eyes when you said that one thing, like, you know, you know, you've got somebody. Um, so yeah, I can go. <laughs> And yeah, I think it's just a kind of great matchup because like Shakespeare and wrestling like are actually like a perfect 
tag team, I think. Because um, people have this idea of Shakespeare as, like, you know, kind of prestige theatre and, like, you know, the Royal Shakespeare Company and, like, Ian McKellen and, like, these grand stages and respectful applause. Yeah. But because, like, I studied Shakespeare, like, you know, like, it's, it was actually very different at the time. And it's there, like, back, like, you know, that, you know, like, you know, in Shakespeare's time when he was actually producing these plays, like, you'd, you know, you'd have, like, nice upper class London, like, you know, like, a city on the rise. And you'd cross the bridge over the Thames to, like, the bad part of town where you had like you know all these like brothels and seedy bars with like you know like you know illegal game fighting and gambling and stuff and then you had like in the middle of all that the globe theater um which like and the tickets were super cheap so you'd have for basically folk would go to get tanked up drunk and they'd go and they'd go to the theater and then like the theatre stage at the time wasn't like the Pusinimi March we think of. It was, you walked out this curtain down this ramp to this big square that was in the middle and all, all the sort of like seats were in the round and audiences would cheer um, like the good guys and boo the bad guys, like, you know, and like do chants for their favourites, you know. And like, so people had to like act really big and really physical to kind of like, you know, like get people's attention. So, and actually it's essentially the closest modern like, successor to classic Shakespeare is pro wrestling when you think about it so <laughs> it, was, it was like a natural fit oh I like that a- yeah. Alex uh, how, how did how, how did you feel when you were asked to do this um well I, so we uh I John brought this up I think like 2018 right 2017. Yeah, would have been a that year. I was like a big publisher like had asked like you know like at the time it said pitch is an idea any idea um, about any artist or anything, so I kind of thought this is my chance. So I came up with the Crimson Cage and I pitched it, and that published ended up passing. I was like, "Oh, that's a shame." Then Alex is like, "Well, we should just do it anyway because it's a great idea." So then, like, that's just not doing. Yeah, because uh, yeah, John's we we're t- we we're kicking around ideas after saying, and um, kind of like, uh, "All right, that was our five. We'll see what happens with them. Hopefully, it's a hit." But uh, what what we what else we got? And uh, yeah, John said, "You know, I this is like a passion project I've always had and." You know, like it's, you know, I was, he told me about it. And, um, like at first I thought I, I was like wrestling in Shakespeare. That's hilarious. Like what you were saying, this is, I, in my head, like, Oh, Shakespeare, that's pristine, like all duded up and all fancy. And then wrestling is, you know, you get like a cheap dog and a beer and you're cheering for these big guys in little, little shorts. <laughs> and, um, but, uh, but then I, so but I was like, no, nah, I'm game. Let, let me see what this is. And, um, look at the script I'm like oh my this is brilliant this is i mean what a blast this is and um and even like going through like right now we're like i'm we've uh, like six pages in on the last issue and um and just seeing like one how like all the wrestling kind of went along was like oh this is like a blast and all that and just seeing how he fit in parts of Macbeth, like oh how's he gonna fit in this part and this part and it's been really great seeing how it all pulls together so i can't wait for people to see it but yeah, my initial react, and well, actually, once I read the script, I went straight over to my wife, and I was like, "This is so much fun! You got to look at this. Look, he does this, and then he's doing this, and then this character's gonna be this guy, and this guy's gonna be this." Guy. And and she was like, "This sounds great. Who's like? Can I color it?" I was like, "Yes, you can. Sure, John's cool with that." So, yeah, so it was all like figured out. Yeah, like when like yeah, we're doing this, and uh, here's some character designs, and and. Yeah. Yeah, and then yeah, like I said, Haas uh, jumped in on those uh, on that pitch packet, and a few years and later, I'm, here we go. <laughs> and I'm so happy that it's because like not only is it a dream project, but in execution, I feel like I've had like my dream creative team because not to blow smoke up his bum just because he's here, but like. Um, like, smoke. <laughs> 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 but like um, for me, like Alex, like. Is like, I just think we have a great partnership and it's actually got to the point that whenever I come up with an idea and I imagine it as a comic in my head, my default is like to imagine Alex drawing it. That's how just I that's how I just imagine my stories now. So like I actually get it has to be an effort sometimes because I like, think put Alex only has so many hands, like you know, like, you know, you can't like so like I have to you know like, I have to specifically force myself to think of different people for projects sometimes, you know, but like um He's a great, like, you know, fit in for this project. He's done so much interesting stuff. Like, because what we talked about, we had a lot of conversations about this, is that 
I obviously it would be as well as been a, because I'm a big fan of wrestling and because I'm a big fan of comics, like, you know, I've read like, you know, a lot of wrestling comics, you know, some good ones, some not so good ones. And like when I but I've thought I've had conversations about I think we could do stuff with you know, like wrestling and comics that hasn't been done before in terms of like using the medium of comics to really explore um the nature of like, you know, a wrestling match. Because like, what I didn't want to have was I didn't want this to be um, the story happens, and then we stop the story to have like some wrestling going on for a few pages, and then we get back to the story after the wrestling. So the wrestling matches are actually integral, like to like the story, like the kind of character dynamics play out. And because like wrestling is an art form, the whole idea of it is is that kind of balance between what's fake and what's real. Like everybody knows wrestling's fake right now, but you're trying to get that idea of like you know, every- wrestling's fake, but this thing here is real. Um, and you're, you're kind of like treading that line. So that's the kind of line we tread in this. We're like, you know, you're watching something. And if we do our job and if Alex has done his job, you're not sure if you're watching like an actual fight be play out between these characters. Because like sometimes there's characters that are in conflict outside of the ring. Or if it's just like they're performing like, you know, yeah. for us and putting on a show of a fight. And Alex, you might want to talk a little bit more about this. But you had the great idea of like, you know, whenever we're seeing stuff for the audience, it's like outside mm-hmm. the ring and it's like, POV shots from within the crowd, and then we jump inside the ring when it's like you know the characters communicating with each other. Yeah, yeah oh, so um, awesome. yeah, when you're flipping through it, you'll notice um, like anytime it's the show, like anytime it's the show they're doing in front of the audience and all that, you're outside the ring. The, the ropes will always be between you and the characters all the time. So when it's the show, you're you know you're with the audience, you know. But uh, when things start getting like like when wrestlers start like they mention something to each other or they're doing something like that connected to that's personal to them, uh, that's when you're inside the ring with them. And that's when like uh, things are getting heavy if you're inside those ropes. Yeah, like and, when they're like uh, whispering to each other, "Hey, how high can you drop kick?" And this yeah, and that, yeah, right. Yeah. That's By the way, that, uh, that bit I'll, I'll let you know. So I drew that, and I I. Um, I kind of drew it in a way, uh, not, not to give anything away to the story. There's a part he, uh, uh, I'll just say one character dropkicks another character and they fall out of the ring. First thing I thought of was like Raging Bull where he like he knocks a guy through the ropes. And uh, so I drew it that way and John was like, no, no, I what I I meant to say. that." So what John did was he made a little video. He took a little couple of action figures. He's like, all right. <laughs> And he runs in. Ha! <laughs> That's awesome. It was very helpful. We got, I, we got the shot. So nice. the, the, the very complex, you know, nature yeah. of like sophisticated writer artist symbiosis. Yeah, yeah very, like dropped out of being like eight years old. Like, all right, here's, here's your daddy. He's over here. <laughs> Uh, between that, I was like doing lots of like action figure play acting at various points, and also I was like sending you lots of like Kazucha Okada versus Kenny Omega matches and saying, right, if you watch the bit of like seventeen minutes in when Okada does the jump to the top rope and drop kicks, and I was like, that's what I want to see if you can capture. You know? <laughs> I love it. I love the action figure theater. That's that's really yeah. good. You, that should be like maybe John should start a YouTube channel, like action figure <laughs> theater. Like here you go. Like that, 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 maybe I should do that. Well, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, you, you got you guys behind. Yeah, yeah, grab, a, grab the thing there and uh, let's see, uh, Marsha Manhunter there. They can do that. Yeah, right. One of my favorite bits in the whole thing is uh, there's this moment where one of the characters comes across another character in a bar and they're like, oh, the fans don't, some of the fans down here don't know that it's fake. And they like, they get in this bar brawl. Oh. Like, it's like, it, like, that's a really cool bit. Like, did that, is that something that happened back in the day where they had to like keep yeah. up this, 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 like sure. if Ric Flair was in a bar with somebody and they're beefing on in the ring, right? And so they're like, well, fuck, we, we got to get in a damn fight tonight. Let's do it. Well, well, actually, that was based on an actual story. I heard like, um, well, first off, I should say that like originally like this, the first issue, like the first issue was already an oversized first issue. Like AWA very kindly gave us 32 pages, but at one point it was even longer. So originally it was a whole scene with like, you know, when they go up to this guy and it's like, sorry, we're going to have to fight, you know, put on yes. a good show for the locals <laughs> and have this kind of really like, ridiculous fight through the bar. But I had to sadly cut that. It was killing yeah. your balance. But, I'm trying to remember, did he actually? come over and say we're gonna fight because i remember him like yeah. just walking over like and take a pool cue and go bam yeah. he's like what the hell <laughs> he walks like, oh, the glass oh, he's like you know God. i'm sorry <laughs> Remy. Remy's like i just got my perm done you're gonna smash like yeah, yeah. he's like, like, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, like 
<laughs> but but, sadly, but yeah, that's based on. I actually had watched an interview with um, a wrestler called Conan. Um, he's a Mexican wrestler, really well regarded, and he was talking about how back in the day, like it was like you know, everyone was seen it, especially in Mexico at the time, like back in, even as late as the nineties, people saw it as real. And he said at one point. He was walking through the airport and like some young fans ran up to him and they're like, you know, Conan, like, you know, Pero Aguayo's like at the departure lounge, like getting his, or the arrivals getting his cases. And Conan's like, that motherfucker, like, and had to roll up his sleeves and run to arrivals and start rolling, like, you know, with this guy like punching him, like, and they both got thrown out by airport security. Because... <laughs> That's, awesome. That's great. Brian, you've read it. What do you think? And what questions do you have? Um, yeah, uh, well, I absolutely loved it. Um, and uh, I was super excited when uh, Robbie said we're getting together to do this and that, you know, this was the announcement, you know, when I saw the announcement, I was like, wow, that's, that's awesome. Um, uh, most of my exposure to wrestling uh, is actually in comic books. Um, but John, you sent me that list and uh, I did, I did watch the first fight on that list. And, and I was, I was, you know, 15 minutes in, I, I was like, I was, you know, stressed out the entire time like who's gonna win you know i mean i was like so bought in and uh knowing that it's you know you know fake and everything but uh so i need to get more uh caught up on some of those things but uh i did cheat a little bit instead of rereading macbeth i watched the 2015 movie that they made good, a good Michael. one very good movie yeah. um well yeah it was also a good excuse to watch that because i hadn't seen it <laughs> i've been oh, meaning to watch yeah, it. i love it it's fantastic it, yeah highly recommend it because it's uh I don't know. The, the cinematography of it is brilliant, but yeah, that was the Michael Fassbender right? one, right? Yeah, Michael yeah, Fassbender. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, and, yeah it's, uh, it's a gorgeous movie. Absolutely gorgeous movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just some of those scenes are just insane. Oh um, yeah. And then uh, oh, I haven't seen that. Michael Fassbender's in that. Yeah, yeah. Like, and uh, yeah, Gary and Cotillard and uh, Cotillard, Slater McBeth. I think yeah. it may have actually been. I think it was around Christmas 2015. I saw that movie, um, and that was actually maybe when the first Dyke Inkling came back in my head. Oh yeah, like, was oh. the McBeth yeah. story, like you know, because yeah. obviously I was already a fan of McBeth, but that was like what really kind of reignited it and made me think, you know, oh, I want to do like my story now, like you know. Then I think I revisited Throne the Blood, and it all kind of came together for there. Yeah, yeah, and Throne of Blood is amazing too, by the way. But yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so uh, um, but it, one thing that did make me think is when I was reading the comic too is that the the, the southern circuit is perfect for it, you know, because you you start in the small kind of arena and that's kind of how the you know the story just kind of starts, you know, where he's the thane of Glamis, I think, to start off with, yeah, and then keeps, yep, like, thane of Glamis, yeah, you know, and keep of thane of Cawdor, and, and then he becomes thane, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I can't yeah. remember the order, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm you know I'm definitely excited to see you know see this unfold and everything so yeah. um is it uh I, I, well another thing i thought was pretty good is there's there is that segment in there where uh you know Macbeth talks about uh uh you know the sound and fury uh, signifying nothing and things like that and that kind of is there is there going to be kind of sneaking in some like meta elements like you know that kind of yeah, stuff there well, there's definitely there's definitely a lot so like one of the things i had in mind is that um Obviously, we're, follow we're following the story of Macbeth, but one of the main things is going to be like we're going to do a little like diversions. We're going to tease where they be doing things differently before bringing things back onto the path, you know. And like, and even like, there's like little examples of that, like in the first issue, like you, know, you think you're going to get like you know a moment from the story, and we pull back and do something different, and kind of like subvert the expectations. So there's definitely lots of like, little, and I think like you know one of my things I said is I wanted to make none of them too obvious, but. There's at least one Macbeth line, like, you know, in every issue yeah. in the series. Um, I think the only issue that doesn't have a direct Macbeth line is the first issue, because um, the first issue has um, a line from Throne of Blood um, instead, like, you know, where the witches say, you know, your luck will turn slower than your friends. I think I managed to work that into, like, you know, the <laughs> Bio Sisters dialogue. <clears throat> but yeah, like, you know, watch out for the various kind of, like, I'm particularly proud of... Um, I won't go into the specifics of how we do it yet, but I'm particularly proud of the scene in Macbeth where, like, I mean, Beth gathers all the lords together for a grand dinner. Um, and, like, that's when he kind of, like, sees Banquo. Our version of it, like, I actually cackled to myself when I came up with that. This is so perfect. You know, I can't wait. Uh, oh, that's exciting. For the record, that bit you're talking about, I, that might be, uh, I, I'm, I, it's a blow of smoke in my own butt. Uh, that, I'm so proud of that it came out. I was like, yeah, it was one of those like few times like this, like oh, perfect. That, this came out better than I was hoping it was going to come out. But yeah, that's it. What he's talking about is really good. Uh, yeah, I also like how you did it in the uh, second issue too, by the way. 
What's that? Oh, yeah, I, yeah. The uh-huh. line he tucked in in the second issue. But, but these, Look at him teasing us, Brian. See, we yeah. thought we were cool and privileged having read the first issue, and they're like, oh, no, you ain't seen I'm it. I'm, 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 I'm on. To bring you back in for more, you know? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> to see how, how excited we can get, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, Alex, I just want to know, like, in your studio, do you have a bunch of, like, pictures put up of, like, Brutus the Barber Beefcake and Ravishing Rick Rude? And, like, do you do you have, like, what do you use for reference on these things? Just pictures of me. <laughs> it's, it's John, but it's the same poses as, like, uh, ra- like doing this whole thing. And, yeah, it's just John all over. <laughs> I like that. John's making action figure theater. He's taking, yeah. like, pictures. Well, like, well, like uh, me and these guys. Like, so one of the things I, I specifically was thinking, uh, like, when like doing these character designs for these guys was uh like I, I didn't want them to look like ripped. Like I didn't want them to be like they're in shape, sure, but they also go out and drink beer all night. So they're gonna have some like padding to them. Like they could take in a fight, but they're not like they're not gonna look like Superman. They're not gonna look like you know they're not gonna be chiseled, you know? Yeah. Like there's gonna be some like fat in that stomach. So um so yeah so when I was looking at these guys I was really looking at you know, like Dusty Rhodes and uh, Ric Flair and all, all those guys. But uh, yeah, not so much like the later guys and all that. But um, but to answer your question, yeah, uh, you know, it's basically a bunch of books. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, good, that is a good point, though, in terms of like the physique. I think we had a conversation with that because the idea of like the pure ripped, muscular, like, you know, wrestler with like the sub, like perfect six packs and stuff, yeah. that actually was like, a post like because we are set like 1984 and that was very much an inv- not an invention as such but in terms of being popularized that was very much like wwf like wrestlemania when that became the yeah. expectation before that you had guys like you know rick flair or whatever like you know or um dusty Rhodes. Uh, yeah. well, uh, dusty Rhodes was in shape but yeah like yeah. rick flair was no. shit. I, I think yeah, like, yeah, uh, rocky shape, one and two, and then you know. rocky three you know like rocky's in the first two was kind of pudgy then all of a sudden he's like yeah. Like there's not like, like, Adonis, like you know yeah, he's yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. that's so. something that happened in like just action stars right like sure, yeah. too, like in movies where they go from you know being like i mean they're in shape obviously but yeah they they drink beer they eat cheetos you know things oh, yeah. like that and then yeah. and then they, they start like it's you know then you get into yeah. like the rock era yeah, once well, like schwarzenegger just, shows up and that kind of changed everything in the 80s and yeah, yeah, right? I mean, yeah and and especially so nowadays yeah. like uh, Madras, Nowadays, I think it'd be like uh, an actor. You gotta make sure you get a gym membership first. Mad respect actually to Robert Pattinson. Like when he said, like, "What's your exercise regime like to get into Batman shape?" And he's like, mm-hmm. "Nothing really. I'm just gonna put on the costume, you know." <laughs> 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 you know like, and then everybody <laughs> gave him work shit. Out, relax. Everybody <laughs> gave him shit for that. I'm like, "You think Michael <laughs> Keaton was in the uh, gym? Like, yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, what was it? Like, you know." Um, that Lawrence Olivier said it's called acting, dear boy. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. This, is, this is pretend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is make believe. What we're doing is make believe. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I was into wrestling in the eighties and the in the early nineties, right? As a kid, yeah. and then I got back into it in the Attitude Era, which most <laughs> teenagers that were boys, especially in the nineties, were really into the Attitude Era. And uh, then I fell out of it for a long time. I came back in for a little bit, and then I just kind of got got kind of out of it. Uh, John, I want to ask you this real quick because you're you're a hardcore fan. What's missing, if anything, in in modern mainstream wrestling that was prevalent back in those days that that you loved? Well, mm-hmm. it's interesting. Like you know, like, I watched Time if you go. Yeah, I'll draw the clip on this version, but. <laughs> But for me, like, I feel that obviously there's lots of different factors. Like, you're you're never going to get the massive multi million ratings that you had back in the day simply because you don't get that for really any TV these days. Because, like, people watch TV differently than they did back then. It's all like, you know, streaming and multiple options, etc., etc. However, I think that. I've been, th- I've watched through like the salary, you know, like the green, you know, the highs and the lows and like the real lows, you know. And for me, I think one thing that's interesting now is like you see, like, um, just like AEW in the past couple of like, you know, there's been around for the past couple of years, but especially in the past couple of months, it's really the ratings have been going like, you know, it's actually getting quite, you know, interesting and again. And I think it's because one of these things that the worst thing that could have happened to WWE or WWF as it was back in the day is. WCW folded and had no competition because when you have no competition and you've got a monopoly, 
there's no incentive to like be better. Like for the, for essentially the better part of twenty years, there was this idea of you just accepted as a wrestling fan that you were going to like basically like sifting for nuggets of gold and fields of shit because like you know there wasn't anything better. Um, but all, all of a sudden, there's this revolutionary idea of like I mean AEW isn't necessarily doing anything revolutionary. I said essentially doing like. We have a two-hour weekly TV program where we show people characters that they're interested in, and we have stories that are competently told and have satisfying resolutions, you know, which is like this, the formula for any TV, but for, because they haven't had that in so long, it's like rocket science. So, yeah, I don't think it's anything like overcomplicated. I think, like, you know, it's very simple. Like, wrestling entry is a story like any other drama, dramatic television. Um, it's like, you know, you have character arcs, you have, like, long-term planning, you have, like, you know, conflict cliffhangers, like, you know, it's like any other TV show. And I think, like, is if you have folk that have an idea of giving people what they want, you're only going to see improvements. Yeah, one of my favorite bits in the in the issue of number one of Crimson Cage is when the guy's like, well, I thought I wanted to be a wrestler, then I realized I, I wanted to be a storyteller. Like, I want to tell stories. Like, and that's what it is. That's what gets you into it. That's why it was like comics. Like, you got to cheer for the baby face. You got to be shocked at the heel turns. You know, you got to, like, you got to hate the villains. Like, and they were some of the best villains. Like, and it's cool to see, like, that brought me right back to being, like, an eight-year-old watching wrestling. It, in my, it, we watched NWA and WWF and all that kind of stuff back in the day. But, like, it just brought me back to, like, Saturday night watching wrestling just loving it, seeing these dudes that were in sort of shape, you know, like throw <laughs> each other around and, and, and drop kick them off of the, the turnbuckle and all that kind of stuff. And, and I had I, to also I mean, refamiliarize myself with some of the terms when I was yeah. reading Crimson Cage. Too. Well, that, yeah. we almost talked about should we have a glossary in here? Because I was very much quite adamant <laughs> about, like, you know, we don't want to, like, you know, make it like you know spoon fed we're gonna sort of throw people on the deep end we're just gonna start using like these like terms and these kind of like you know you know like inside the inside baseball dialogue and let folk catch up and fill in the blanks themselves like you know and it almost comes almost weirdly enough it kind of becomes a substitute but between like we have because it's set in like new orleans we have some louisiana dialect as well but we also have like you know like lots of wrestling insider terms so it almost becomes a substitute of like shakespearean cadence and like you know shakespearean language you know what it's like you know you know like, it's the same idea but trying to kind of like pick apart the words you don't necessarily understand to get a sense of the wider intent we got, nice. we got context clues in there. So you can figure it out. Yeah, you can you can totally figure it out. It's easy. Yeah. You, you're, it's yeah. just like reading Shakespeare, and you're like, "What the hell did that dude just say?" Yeah, and then you're like, "Oh, <laughs> well, I, never mind. I got I, it." I'm very much a, of the opinion that Shakespeare, like, I think everyone has negative ideas of Shakespeare because our introduction to it is all like you know in a classroom setting with a but either with a teacher who's like reading everything to you in a monologue and in a monotone, or yeah. that kind of terror of like you know. The kids taking turns to read the lines in the class, and you're oh, sitting no. here like, you know, so terrified it's going to be your turn to read the <laughs> so line, even as butcher some like doth now, you know, um, and like because you know, like, so Shakespeare isn't necessarily meant to be read; it's meant to be performed and to be watched. You know, I mean, you actually watch it performed and you see the emotion, the intonation, like you know, you fill in the blanks yourself, and it's actually very accessible. That's why so much Shakespeare yeah. work can be modernized, you know, and it's yeah. become like sure. a bit, it's become a joke where people are like, oh, we're going to do a modernization of the Shakespeare, but I don't care what people say. Like, I didn't like the Romeo and Juliet one, but that's because I don't really like that story that much to begin with. Yeah. But Hamlet's my jam, right? And yeah. there was a modernization of that with Ethan Hawke that oh, yeah, yeah. blows oh, yeah, yeah. me away. I love and Kyle MacLachlan and Bill Murray's in that movie. Yeah. Uh, Lee I Shider. get a little... To go back to like the Kurosawa link, maybe my favorite mm. um, adaptation of Hamlet, and it's a bit of a lucid adaptation, is Kurosawa's The Bad Sleep Well. Um, if you watch that, that is an amazing film that we kind of replace with the kind of dynamics of Hamlet and stuff and the family revenge story and all that. <laughs> but like, yeah, I mean, like in terms of like in terms of like modernizations of like you know Shakespeare, I know like you know mean. Like when we're talking about developing the Crimson Cage, like Alex and I were talking about, yeah, there's like it's such a natural fight. You could do so many different types of stories. Like, you know, like I'm gonna do like Hamlet, like, you know, and like, you know, Japan in the nineties and call it King's Road, you know, I wanna do like, you know, like a King Lear with like Vince McMahon and his various like shitty children, you know. <laughs> like, you, know like, you know, like there's like all these different things you could do like that. And I think you know, it's a really kind of cool concept to play with. That was cool. All right, Alex, I got a, I got a, a thought and a question for you then. All, All right. right. So I want to know, are you really interested in, in drawing these like really like gnarly and, and 
and unnerving comics or do you really just want to draw like puppy dogs and roses and <laughs> fields and like or, or, or is this are you into this because it seems like or i don't know anybody in comics right now there's a lot of great artists but like when it comes to like horror comics or like unnerving psychological like bro your artwork freaking works there is something visceral hey, about that and even in a book about wrestling you're, you're you got some crazy ass shit going on in that first issue <laughs> wait wait till the scene in issue four um, <laughs> oh, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> um no i mean i i dig this stuff i mean uh it's it's i always have you know it's um uh i got nothing against puppies and kittens and all that like remember what i was saying i was i used to do animation so i was expecting to do puppies and kittens because kind of the puppy story uh, in sync is not an uplifting story by the way so, <laughs> it works out in the end yeah it's a little bit, bit you know? <laughs> it's happy. One, one of two sync stories that have a happy ending yeah right <laughs> yeah should i tell them what i suggested for an ending on that oh yeah oh yeah, yeah i could go for it <laughs> yeah, I, I I suggested that uh you know like uh that that the dog at the end should have like attacked her. Like for those oh, who don't know, no. um <laughs> this whole like dog fighting issue, all this crazy stuff happens. And John oh. gives it a happy ending where uh, the woman uh gets a uh who's the hero of the story, uh, gets one of the dogs from the fighting ring and is now taking care of this dog. She My idea was we should have a dog like over throwing the animals yeah. and things. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, yeah, we should have the dog like go for the throat and just tear it out and all blood everywhere. <laughs> and then like the mob boss is like, that's what happens when you even suggest something. And be like, oh, what? Like, what do you think? And John's like, what's the matter with you? Like, you're a terrible person. <laughs> People think I'm the twisted one. You know, so. <laughs> the guy that wrote things like that's too far. Yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 well, like, how dare you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> you think you know somebody i mean yeah. alex is the che most cheeriest nicest man you could meet like you obviously gets all marks all out in the page uh, and so, so is john by the way i mean it's <laughs> you know, it like how do you, you know how can you write this stuff and 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 stay sane but at the, how do you how can you draw it how can you like render oh, it out there you know but yeah, like it's it's yeah. part of that therapy i said this recently because I, I love the book red room by ed Piscor. Yeah, and it's like, um, it's like but, murder yeah. porn, right? Yeah. I love that book. And I, I was on a top 10 video with Jim and Collectibles. And I was like, you know, some people say that this book is what it is and whatnot. But I'm tell you what, some of us would rather experience these things in this book than go out and actually, I don't know, kill a motherfucker ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so. yeah, right. Well, I mean, that's a, so it's uh, and and John and I've talked about this a little bit too. Like, uh, like all like the true crime drama, like all that stuff, like the real, like that's, I can't handle that stuff because that's, that's somebody, someone happened to somebody and they're exploiting victims of this stuff. Like, not, but what we're like, what we're doing like this, when I'm, when I'm drawing all this stuff, when I'm watching a horror movie, it's make believe, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. it's like, this is, uh, and this, and then this is what I did with the, uh, at the end of uh, when I drew Road of Bones with Rich. Um, we uh i did this whole like we did the whole thing they're in the snow it's horrible it's terrible and by the end i was like i'm just gonna give these guys a break and i i gave i put them all like at a beach party or like no it was like a pool party and then like one guy's grilling the other guy's having a margarita like one of the monsters is like tanning <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, uh, it, it's like uh it's like when uh wiley coyote gets like hit with an anvil or whatever it's he's gonna be fine he's fine yeah. this, all these guys are fine yeah, yeah. I mean, at least for uh, yeah. me, because I can, I can draw. I can make them do whatever they want to. So yeah, I mean, I totally agree with Alex. I mean, like, in terms of like, I mean, I can't like, I can't watch somebody getting like, you know, blood taken without getting like white heady. Like, oh, oh no, I can't watch just someone getting a... <laughs> But you know, but if it's like you know, like fictionalized, you know, I can happily watch someone getting their eyeballs skipped. Yeah, out, like, like, yeah, you know? take their whole arm. It's fine. <laughs> you know? yeah, it's like, but like, and for me, like. <laughs> Because I was watching horror from like a, a really young age, probably like, far too young to be watching horror. Like I've told, I'm sure I told this story when I was on the last time, you know. But I like, can, I was a kid, like you know, four or five years old, going to the video shop and like you know, my local video shop down the street, you know, which was very permissive, probably like not legally permissive, you know. Um, <laughs> and, like so I'd, I'd go into the video shop and I'd walk out with like. Disney's Peter Pan and like Maniac Cop Three, you know. That's actually my plan for this evening is to watch oh, Peter Pan oh, and Maniac Cop. <laughs> <laughs> so like, ah, so like, whenever I watch horror, like you know, especially like really gory, like trashy, schlocky horror from like you know the eighties and nineties, yeah. I get like you know that for me is like 
nostalgia and it kind of makes me associate with like you know childhood nice you know like you know like fond memories you know like <laughs> all my brain being wired up in a screwed way you know and I kind of feel like it's like it's the horror's less scary than the real world because it's like you know addressing like you know sort of like forbidden or dark things in a controlled safe environment like you know um and I think like that's healthy like you know it's not you know like I don't think you know, it's weird or like bad to watch horror like as much as some folk have liked to say it is I think like you know it's like it's, it's a long standing like a medium of storytelling as any like it goes back to you know telling you know it's as far back as people could like you know tell stories on like you know they were they were telling scary stories around the fire you know and like even like to get back onto like you know like Macbeth is like what 400 years old so um, I, I can't count maybe it's the 17th century 400 years old you know? yeah. um, like, you know, you know, but like, you know as, as, old, as old as that is that was like a horror story at the time like you know that's like you know Absolutely. witches and bloodshed and curses you know like you know folk have fascination with like those kind of stories like you know like people like to be scared like you know it's a primal emotion like being made to laugh or being made to cry um mm. so yeah no i think like you know long live horror yeah I'm the, I'm there with you. We're in the middle of horror fest right now, so that's a good moment. Before we get to what Brian was saying, there it's a good moment for me to be like, we're knee deep into horror fest, everybody. There's the awesome. there's the list you can oh, see. see. Awesome so, birds. Oh yeah, that's a great one. A nice one. Oh, like uh, you're yes. getting right into it. Yeah. Yeah. So you know it's tomorrow speedy, night. Oh my god. Oh, tomorrow yeah. night, join us for the Fun House, one of my favorite two Toby Hooper films, and then Saturday night on Dylan's horror show, Haunt, which is a new movie, kind of like. Fun House. Have y'all seen Haunt yet? It's like I've, 2019. I've, I've seen Haunt, but I've not seen The Fun House. The Fun House has been a glaring, like, I mean, like, gap in my viewing for years that I've been meaning to fill. Um, but I did see Haunt quite recently. Haunt was really good. Yeah, no, it was. I was surprised my homie Dylan picked a good movie for one of his shows. Like, I was <laughs> really, really surprised. Like, it Haunt's amazing. See, that was a really I'm good not, movie. I'm not sure how much of it, like, you know, is it being good and how much of it is I'm just, like, a sucker for Halloween movies. Like, if a movie's set, like, around <laughs> Halloween, I just automatically add a star on it, like, you know, yeah. and I, 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 love, I love going to haunts, right? And so <laughs> yeah. the idea yeah. of like going to one of these sketchy, like on the side of the road haunted houses, haunted attractions, and then it's like actually, you know, murderers <laughs> that are there, like yeah. serial killers. It was, I, I actually liked it. So yeah, this week I've watched Haunt, and then I've read reread Volume One of Sync. So right now, nobody needs to come around me and clown makeup. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, yeah. those clowns. <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to ask on the on the art for some of that stuff, Alex. Do you uh, do you ever find yourself maybe hesitating sometimes that when you're looking up uh, references or anything? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I was I'm thinking sure of, I'm on a couple of lists. You know, it's yeah. uh, <laughs> like um, you're like, how do I phrase this? Um, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> like. Um, Oh my god! Yeah, I uh, think I not even watch the horror too. stuff. I think it was like you know, with like sync time, the people like the, the weird sex issue. I was like, yeah. have fun doing yeah. this, Alex. You know, yeah. Uh, but, so <laughs> you guys, you guys know sync time, right? <laughs> he's, he's, been getting, yeah. he's been getting so, ads for butt plugs ever since he like did that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I always love to say. You know, so I always love to say that I. I just moved into where I live now, uh, and I think I might have drawn sync. Uh, nine or uh, yeah, maybe is it one, one of the ones I think it was Mr. Dig, like the, that Mr. Dig uh, story that I did here first. But uh, right across the street from me is an elementary school, <laughs> and I was drawing that comic <laughs> while I could hear like the bell outside, and like <laughs> the school buses are going up and down the road. And, like, I feel like such a sleep, it's terrible. I've got to learn how the world works. <laughs> no, no, I can tell you try, kids. Let the boy watch. <laughs> yeah, you will watch it. <laughs> What's that bubble be doing? This, he's having a good time is what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. But, uh, yeah, so my my Google search is screwed up. Uh, yeah, right now it's uh, it's all, like, my computer is like, oh, this guy, this has to be the biggest wrestling fan in the world because it's all, like, <laughs> Like, all right, I know what a suplex he's, he's, is, but I, I, I need some, like, you know? <laughs> or, like, you know, like, um, what was it? Uh, uh, oh, I, and I was, one of the issues, there's a camel clutch, which I was so happy to see in there. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, all right, how does the camel clutch work? And I'll, I kind of know it's this, but, like, where like where would your leg be and all this stuff? So, yeah, so my computer right now is all wrestling stuff. And um, <laughs> and for, the, for anybody watching at home, um, for, like, 
gore and splatter, watch Gallagher videos. Watch him smash a watermelon. You get the idea right oh, there. There you go. Yeah, you know, so you know, you know, like head's kind of climbing on you. Now that you, now that you mention this, I'm sure you have drawn at least one head, you know, in these books, which is essentially like a gag or watermelon. You know, by the time like it's done with. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> that's a good reference. Like, just watch Gallagher. And that's how a head it would explode. You yeah, don't have to look it just, up. When he smashes a watermelon with yeah. the hammer, it's like, okay, okay. I see. You got all right. So your chunk would be here, and you get your brain splinter there. What does but... that? What does that tell you about humanity and like just what we actually are in this in the long scheme of the cosmos? When oh. our head's just like a watermelon that could easily be smashed by a somewhat decent comedian. Like that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I remember if anyone was just meat and veg in the end. Yeah. What are you going to do? We're a bunch of monkeys and we figured this out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, Brian, continue on. I got to go take a look. <laughs> oh, okay. You call him a monkey? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, maybe, kind of. Who knows? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. It fits. Um, well, I know well, is Robbie going to go Yeah, that's probably. Is he going potty? <laughs> yeah. He was too afraid to say it. Too afraid to say it. <laughs> Be like my boy, just announce it. I gotta, yeah, I gotta take it <laughs> uh, I was gonna. You, you guys have already kind of touched on on your how you guys work together. I was. I wanted to see if you wanted to expand more on that because I, I, uh, I was going back and looking at some stuff, and I realized you guys have been working together for quite some time. Because I don't know if the first thing you did was oxymoron, but my yeah. comics life partner Alex Cormack. Um, but yeah, like the but yeah, we go way back, and actually, I, I love telling this story. Um, which was the first time we worked on before the oxymoron was a short story for uh the scam anthology. Um, like we originally like the first time I'd seen Alex's work was like the oxymoron anthology Kickstarter, where Alex had had a story in it, which was very gore drenched, as you'd expect from Alex. Right. And then um, when it came time to like do like a story for the scam anthology, they said like Tyler James, the publisher, and Joe Mulvey, the writer of Scam, was like, you know. Or what kind of art? Like, you know, what artist would you like to work with on your scam story? And I said, I'm thinking like maybe an Alex Cormack type. <laughs> and like, so why not we just give you Alex Cormack? You know, I was like, yes. And like, we had a great time working on that. And then like from there, like we worked together on Oxymoron, Lovely Nightmare, which was Tyler wanted to do a new story with the Oxymoron because. Um, Oxymoron was a character that appeared in the Red Ten, and like the funny thing was, our first ever convention we did in New York Comic Con 2011, everybody loved this character that was in the front cover. Oh, the Oxymoron, he's great. I want to see more of him. And Tyler's kind of like this bead of sweat coming down his forehead because like he, he kills off the character on the first issue. You know, it's like, what have I done? I've killed my cow, you know. So, like, you know, he's, so you know, so he's had this idea of like doing this big prequel story. Um, and he's like, he brought me on board to write it, um, with him and um alex like was the artist and we had a like, blast working on that yeah. and by the time we finished working on oxymoron i'd said to alex well, let's do something together yeah. but you know i, I want to work on something that's ours um because like as much fun as oxymoron was it was tyler's baby oxymoron's always going to be like tyler's creation and tyler's baby it was nice to play with his toys but you want to get your own action figures and stuff yeah. you know? <laughs> so like um like we spent a lot of time i remember at one point we were sitting in a bus in chicago together just like a spitballing ideas you know like we didn't quite settle in anything at that point but um then like sync came together and like you know from there the rest is history <laughs> that is gold that is gold to the burrito award winner john <laughs> <Lees>. <laughs> I'm having my name legally changed to that actually <laughs> <laughs> Golden Burrito Award winner tattooed on one buttock and like two time Rock and Robbie guest tattooed in the other, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, it's been back. It's been great having you back here, John. And since you're back, one of the last times we, we chatted and we were talking about how much we were all demanding Hotel Volume 2. Well, yeah. it's happening. And I'm going to tell you all this I have read the first issue of Hotel Volume 2. And if you thought that John and Dalibor and company were going to take it easy and like ease us back into this world, no. This is the most like gut wrenching issue of this damn book I've read yet, bro. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it was so much fun getting to come back. Oh, just go get so much fun thing you know, getting to come back to the world of hotel. Like back when we last talked, um, I'd be definitely were wanting to do like you know more hotel, but it's going to be dependent on like you know the response and like you know being able to. And like 
at coming back, like obviously we were blown away by the response to the first volume. Like people really seemed to respond to it. I mean, obviously, like I was had high hopes to book. I have high hopes for every book that I do, but I don't think even I was prepared for how much people would just love this comic. So when people like were you know like demanding more and like you know like telling us they wanted more, I thought. If we bring this back, I don't want to just be more of the same. I don't want for all the folk who were so passionate about bringing it back to feel disappointed. Like, oh, like you know, I wanted to make this one feel bigger, more ambitious, like you know, more audacious and like scarier as well. Um, and, like, and like for me, like to, without going too much into like the specifics of like the story, this first chapter kind of trades on the idea of like you know what happened in the first volume you know the terrible fates that befell these characters in this first volume so i want right from the first page when it's like a family like you know a father a daughter and like a young like you know sort of father you know um a mother and a young son and daughter and a kind of camper van going like into this place i wanted to hit in the pit of your stomach like oh no what's going to happen to like you know these people like you know in this place yeah. and like i'm really proud of the sort of set of stories we've put together we've got a new framing device which isn't like just the same as like um the first volumes it's a little bit different um but like the stories themselves like you know like run the gamut we've got stories that are like really scary like i think the first issue is but we've got some like you know stories that are kind of like darkly funny and we've actually got one of the issues it's one of the things i'm really proud of writing is like we've got a really heart-wrenching like moving story um like we're like the art like Dalibor, the artist is like this is gonna make me you know cry drawing this like you know it's like so emotional um and i was quite proud they managed to kind of like hit those emotional buttons in hotel which i don't think anyone imagined we would have been able to do based on the first volume and i just think like you know it's been so much fun because obviously that team was put together like we didn't really know each other when we started working on hotel i'd already did it in the scripts but now that i know Dalibor, i know lee you know i know sal the Cipriano, the letter um I'm able to like work on something to their style and tailor to what I know they'd be good at and what they'd be interested in drawing and putting together. So it feels this 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 volume feels a lot more collaborative, like you know, a lot more like riffing on ideas together. And um, so yeah, if you enjoyed the first volume, I think you'll really love the second volume. Plus, we've got five issues this time um, as opposed to four, so it's gonna be a bigger story. And yeah, like you know, like. We've got we explore the mystery more. We you know we get into more a little bit more into like what's going on at Piero Courts. Like you know what's the nature of this place. You know what's the nature of the characters within it. Yeah, I think folk are going to be really um, have a lot of fun with it if they enjoyed Volume One. Oh yeah, you will. And 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 that issue number one was great. I, I and it was a big surprise. I was like, oh crap, because you know we we set this up when you announced Crimson Cage, and then you're like, oh. Crap, Hotel Volume 2 got announced. And I was like, what? That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, John, and John just... Lee's comics are like buses, and even ages for one and two come along at once. Yeah, right? It's like, <laughs> yeah. and me and Brian were talking about I was like, I don't know. I guess he's not getting a Hotel Volume 2 because like I haven't heard anything. <laughs> like I literally just told him that like a week or two ago. Yeah, but... yeah I think it was two days later he sends me the message. So yeah. yeah. He's like, yeah, dude, the there's worked... only more Hotel. Like the way it worked out, like, we were developing Crimson Cage before Hotel, but then like, you know, and we had like, you know, the contract signed all good to go, you know, and and then a little thing called like COVID nineteen happened. Yeah, and, you, like, you, know, you want to tell uh, them what you said? That's you know, yeah. So <laughs> let's say, well, the way it worked out, like obviously we spent a long time developing Crimson Cage, you know, like and then we like went with AWA because the following success of Volume One of Hotel, like you know, AWA were keen to keep on working with us. So like I pitched in the Crimson Cage, they loved the idea. Then just with the nature of things, it took a little while to kind of get like the contract finalized, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it was a long process. Then we finally, like you know, we had. I had, you know, like, you know, the deal I wanted with the creative team I wanted, you know, the sort of nature of the story that I wanted, all good to go. And about maybe February, early February 2020. Yeah. And like, so it was all finalized, signed, and all of us signed on a dotted line, good to go, ready to start production. And I said literally to Alex, nothing's stopping this comment from coming out now, short of the fall of society as we know it. Oh, shit. And then, like, <laughs> and then, like, Jesus. thanks a lot, John. Thanks like, John, a lot. what did I do? <laughs> and, like, two or three I weeks later, pandemic. you know. Yeah. So, I sent it all, you know, I know folk keep on asking me, like, when's, like, Sync coming out? You know, when's Sync Volume 3 coming out? Sync Volume 3 is in the works. It's all written. We've started planning it and things. Like, you know, I've actually almost written Sync Volume 4, but the problem yeah, is, like, like, issue, like, issue 17, something, right? Yeah. No, I'm actually just finished the first draft of issue 19. Um, 19. So oh, got yeah, a lot yeah. more. I got like you know the original plan was going to be crimson cage was going to come out in 
2020, and then like Sync Volume 3 was going to come out in like 2021. Um, but obviously the pandemic pushed the timeline back, like and everything. So like you know, um, that means now like you know that both um, Crimson Cage and um, Hotel are Hotel Volume Two are both going to be coming out in December of this year, launching in December of this year. Um, both in October's previews, so available for pre-order now. So let your comic shop know about them, but. So yeah, both those books are coming out in December, and then like Sync Volume Three is probably going to be coming like early 2022 now. But it is all happening. Like you know, we've not forgotten about Sync. We're very, very much on our minds. And, like you know, I've probably been working more on Sync than I ever have in the past year when folks think it's gone away. Yeah. Are you, Are you still doing the uh, the Dig graphic novel you were talking about? Oh yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know how much I'm allowed to say. Um, all I'll say is that keep a, keep a close eye on social media like in the coming weeks and you might have more information about that. No. Oh, you got a Fox mug there? Is that what you got? <laughs> oh, yeah, nice. Nice. <laughs> 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 you bought that specifically for today, didn't you? Man? <laughs> no. I, I want to have I, a Fox uh, mug that can see this going. Uh, oh, <laughs> that's nice. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I got a little chip in there, buddy. So good. Still fighting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so 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 this dig episode definitely like that dig is coming. Like you know, um, more news on that very soon, I imagine. And immediately Excited. following that will be lots more sync to come. That's cool because yeah. the more announcements you guys make, the more we get to have you on the show. Because yeah, I'm well, always yeah. happy to come back. Yeah, oh, you yeah. guys are always well, welcome back. <laughs> All right, did have a quick sync section. The last time we talked, uh, you mentioned there was a soundtrack that oh yeah uh, yeah came out with the first one is that uh, uh i think mentioned something about uh would you be able to publish that like sometime um, coming or yeah well hopefully because the, the the soundtrack's all there like it was all released as part of um the like like it was like in volume one it was a little kind of like card with a little link we could like get it but like i think the book's been outlined like all that all that soundtrack if i were to go like on my computer now like it's all in the sheer dropbox all those tracks like you know mm. i may have a wee talk with tyler maybe it's been all maybe enough time has passed now maybe we should just like you know like talk to jamie um the musician as well and see if we should just like do a release of it um maybe time that in with like um the news of like dig when that hits that may be a good idea and it, yeah. i think it's a good idea because also the world could have your singing debut on that uh that one uh, techno song oh yeah <laughs> oh my you sang on one of them i uh, will <laughs> your voice appears it's, it's definitely his voice yeah <laughs> it's definitely my voice you know and something approaching a melodic you know yeah uh, it's um but... <laughs> like, uh, like robbie you just said you read issue one uh or volume one right so it's um when they're in the uh oh gosh what are they it's issue two and they're oh, yeah. like walking through like the what did we? What did you call it? Like the Badlands? It wasn't the Badlands. It was uh, the Speakeasy. The speakeasy. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, uh, the speakeasy. It's like the abandoned kind of like you know quarry, and I'm yeah. walking through, and you have this pure sinister kind of guy in the heart, like yeah, the kind of this, like, you know, like the, Dr. Seuss, you know, the, kind of, like, the kind of mad hobo king, and he emerges yeah. from the grass, and he goes like, you know, it's time to. And it's like a sort of page turn review, and he brings up a big boombox radio, and it's like boogie, and it's like all these random characters yeah. start yeah. like, they're just dancing. So that is one of the songs in the soundtrack, you know. Yeah, oh, man. I remember showing that to somebody, song. and they're like, "What the hell is this?" <laughs> like, <laughs> John's gonna go know. multimedia, like Alan yeah. Moore, because I remember <laughs> buying albums from Alan Moore. They would be in previews in the early two thousands, and at the shop, I'd be like, "Alan Moore's got an album. Let's check <laughs> that out." And then I listen to it, and it's just like him doing some weird, like, "In the deathly doze of the world, let's talk about it." <laughs> Boom, boom. <laughs> it's really wild. So I'd love some spoken word from you, John. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be great. I understand what I'm saying, you know, but <laughs> there you go. It's, it's just, just talk menacingly, you know. <laughs> yeah. Brian, you're up. I hear a knock at my door. Uh oh. It's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it's going, you know. But it was a very Shakespearean line. I hear a knock at the door. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I guess earlier we were talking about uh, your guys, uh, you know, working relationship. Because I, I uh, you know, I was just wondering. I mean, since you guys have been working together so long, do you guys kind of have a shorthand when you're working together? Because I mean, I imagine if you know, the the working relationship has evolved over <laughs> what seven oh, or eight yeah, years. Yeah, I now? mean, like 
Yeah, like, you know, I think we definitely have, like, no, well, this is, this is an analogy that's not necessarily linked to Alex, but, like, um, I remember at one point in Glasgow Comic Con, um, I was at a panel with Ian Laurie, who was the artist, and then we was gone. And, um, <laughs> okay. like, and we were, and like, it was, like, us two, and it was Colin Bell and Neil Slaughter, so the creative team in this really wholesome, like, you know, like, lovely, like, all-ages comic called Dungeon Fun. And like the you know they were talking about what's the what's the nature of the artist like writer like you know relationship, and then like Neil Lawrence gave this really sweet answer like really soft way like in his, in his soft spoken way that he does and he's like you know I like to think of it as like in Twilight when like the werewolf like imprints on like you know it's soulmate like you know and like then they're together and bonded forever, oh. and I can I thought for a second I chimed and I thought well. For me and Ian, it's more like the human centipede. But that does sound like, you know, like, you know, like, good, but it's not necessarily inaccurate where it's like lots of mad, mad shit gets filtered like through me, like into the artist who then has to filter through themselves and project it onto the page. You know? So it's not necessarily an, an, an accurate. Oh my god! You know, I, I, I have, I, I never heard that anecdote before, but I'm gonna use that every single time. <laughs> John, we lost your audio, just so you know. Oh, oh, Johnny! Oh he my god, Johnny! I've been spending gold. He got gold so excited, he ripped his cord out or yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> the human said to be the night drop, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I was just like, saying, like you know that. Um, like, you know, then you have, like, the colorist and the letter arts. It's not necessarily, like, an inaccurate, like, you know, <laughs> analogy. But, yeah. you know, in terms of, in terms of like, you know, me and Alex, um, as well as that kind of, like, you know, you know, the human centipede element of, like, you know, the shit filtering through me and into Alex, and he shits onto the page. Um, you know, like, you have, like, um, for me, like, we've always had a really good relationship in terms of one of the, the highlights, like, because we've got a slightly different time zone, like, I'll go to bed and I'll wake up in the morning and, like, more often than not, when I, the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I pick up my phone and I look at my notifications and there's a notification from Alex, like, you know, like, a new page for you, XOXO, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> and, like, you know, and, like, you know, and he sent me, like, and we do, like, a page at a time and he'll just send me stuff in progress, you know, and, like, you know, and we'll have, like, you know, little riffs of, like, you know, or why did you try doing this? You know, like why did we try shifting this trend? Yeah. More most often I just say this is amazing because it usually is amazing. Um but yeah, and like and because they've worked together so often now, what I'll find I do quite a lot now is I'll say to him, for this layout, can we do something like you did back in sync three or like you know we have like like things where we refer to ourselves like you know yeah. like, can you do like a layout like that like you know and so like the more we work with her and, and also i kind of feel like i'm just i feel like i'm writing like stuff that i know Alex is going to draw really well like i feel like i've definitely had more like geezers of blood like in my comics like you know <laughs> since i started like, you know working with Alex because i know Alex is going to draw really good geezers of blood you know like and, and like you know just little things like that like you know like, you know it becomes like in a shorthand with each other you know you just i'm writing stuff that i know Alex, that I, that one i know Alex is going to be great at and two that i'm excited to see alex draw and it becomes very much the process of script and it's like you know oh i can't wait to see like alex draw. <laughs> like, like literally like you know that the, i've been this year i've been writing um of sync this past week has been basically maybe been sitting cackling to myself. <laughs> I can't wait to see that. <laughs> like, you, know, like, like, you know, should come with a content warning of like, you know, warning, weird, fucked up bitch, you know, like, you know, like, you know, like, you know, like, so, like so much of it is just the end of this kind of like, you know, like, me throwing it and saying like, you know, here's something crazy, Alex, and I want to see the reaction of us, like, <laughs> imagine him laughing, like, looking at this page, and then the excitement seeing how he's going to bring that to life, and that's the joy of comic. I, I I love awesome. Alex's Alex. I love your work. It, it's Thanks, absolutely. Man. I think the first work of yours I read was Road of Bones, right? right. And, we, yeah. and we had Rich on here, and Rich had nothing but brilliant, beautiful things to say about you as a hey. collaborator. So is John on the last time. Um, hey. And and I just want to know a little bit about like like about your process because like you do amazing work with like value, like meaning like in like Road of Bones, there's so much like snow, and you yeah. use white so much right and it and it works and then when you did sea of sorrows it's all it's all like black like yeah. when you did the underwater stuff it was black it was murky and you know you got the like the mermaid siren creatures and yeah. it's it's legitimately creepy like you know when 
when you watch a horror film <laughs> and they don't show too much and it really right. gets you like you somehow can translate that to the comic book page. Can you tell us a little bit about just your approach? Sure. Um, yeah, with, uh, well, I mean, and the, what you're saying with horror, I, I just, I'm a huge horror movie. If you, if you, if I tilt this up, like the top shelf is all just horror movies. And then I got like nice. 60 or 60 other, like those are the one with covers where I'm like, all right, those might upset my kid. <laughs> <laughs> the top um, shelf yeah. yeah that's like uh like dental lives up there even like all those ones you know nice um but yeah no uh and another thing i uh, like um like with uh at, le- at least with those two um uh it was that was very much a uh with road of bones uh i now live in vermont and I- i'm from massachusetts and um so like snow is it's snowing like you know 11 months of the year and then it's like <laughs> There's no joke. It's uh, it's uh, snow for 11 months and then one month of really crappy sledding. And, uh, <laughs> and um, but on top of that is thank you, Ronald. But uh, and th- so with the snow, I was just like, I just looked outside and like, all right, there's my background. And you know, I grew up with that. And uh, whereas uh, like Sea of Sorrows, uh, when I was a kid, we would always go to Cape Cod in the summertime. And um, so it was, again, just drawing areas that I remember. I remember going into water, and especially Cape Cod, the water's so dark, you can't, like, you're standing it, you can see about, like, if it's up to your chest, you, can, you can't see your belly button. You know, it's just, it's dark, you know. And uh, so, like, if you're going that deep as these guys were, yeah, there's going to be, there's no light source. You're away from the sun, you know, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be pitch black. Which also works great for horror, because it's like being in a house where, like, all the lights are out, and you're like, doing that whole bit. And, um, but yeah, it goes along like, uh, and it, it goes along with what's going on in the story, like, uh, trying to figure out lighting. Uh, like I'm, I'm a big uh, fan of like film noir. So I always try to end like, you know, like everybody else, a big Frank Miller fan. So I love how he did like the lighting in Sin City. So I try to get in th- that in there, but like, and with this one with, uh, like in the ring, since you had all these lights everywhere, there's like, everybody's there to be seen everything. Whereas like a lot of shots outside of the ring, I'll uh, get that, like that heavy, like noir lighting where they're like at the black on the face and all that type of stuff. And um, yeah, just, you know, you read the script and you kind of get a feel for it. And you know, uh, if something's going wrong, get a Dutch angle. If everything's going cool, you know, <laughs> just kind of th- think of it, think of it like, all right, how would uh, like the Coen brothers shoot this or how would like, uh, yeah like Tarantino shoot this or like one of those guys or like, yeah. So you bring a lot of cinematic yeah. influence into it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I think one of the fun things is like the Alex and I definitely have a lot of similar like cinematic touchstones, like, yeah. like, and like, um, what well, I as well as like my Beth and yada yada, one of the big touchstones of the Crimson Cage that we keep on going back to is I keep on saying, um, Argento, like Suspiria and Inferno, yeah. like I keep on saying, like there's like in many points in the movie, like I, I was definitely put in the script. This is this is not realistic lighting in this scene. I want yeah. lots of blues and reds and unnatural, <laughs> like you know, and create the vibe of like watching like Giddles, a lost, like, like you know, Giddles, yeah. you know, like Three Mothers, yeah. like Argento yeah. movie from the nineteen seventies, yeah. you know, yeah. and like so that yeah, was this, this guy's like, been around for uh, the lighting a lot. Nice. For <laughs> oh. Yeah, cool. I'm glad to bring that. I just had to be on my desk. I'm like, oh, I'll show it off. I'm glad you brought up Argento because uh, we have Argento on October 1st for Horror Fest, everybody. So join us for that. Argento is one of my favorite, favorite directors. And that visual style, it it works so well. So it's really cool to see that. Like, so let's just, let's just go ahead and get into it. Like horror movies. Alex, you said you're into horror movies. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. So am I. What are you, what are your favorites? What are, what's the Mount Rushmore of horror films for you? Taking notes here favorites huh oh geez here we go um well i'll I'll say so it's funny because john was saying like that john you watch horror movies as a kid all that right yeah i did it i had nothing to do with horror movies for most of my childhood and like um like and it was always like even watching like raiders lost ark my mother would be like all right turn around their faces are about (laughs) can't look turn around and i'll be like watching like this like i'm totally (laughs) but yeah (laughs) And, um, and so I, I remember like the first movie that really scared the shit out of me was, uh, Carrie, which oh, like, yeah. Where, yeah, but, um, I was like in high school though. Like I, I wasn't like a little kid or anything, but I, I didn't know like how I kind of knew like the cliches of a horror movie, but when her hand shot up at the, 
end of that movie. I oh, that it, is... it bugged the hell out of me. So like, so is she alive? Is she stuck down there? Is she is she coming from hell? Is she pulling people down to hell? Like, and, and that uh, great the Panama music cue, you know, like um and uh but sorry so but some of my favorites are um uh who I've, I've been really digging uh robert eggers that's it right robert eggers uh like he did the witch the lighthouse um that may be my new seen, favorite I still, like i still haven't seen any of those i we were talking oh, about the oh, lighthouse yeah last time john was here i still yeah. haven't watched it yeah I, yeah we I watched uh, it over the christmas break well uh and I, I had issue three i think of Sea of Sorrows next to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, That's good. Yeah, it's a good companion piece, right? Yeah, it was a great companion piece. They were, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, actually, just, just this past up. week, I was like saying, Alex, like, okay, yeah. go back and watch this scene from The Witch um, yeah. for like reference in the Crimson Cage. Or like, you know, uh, yeah, a certain scene. I was like, oh, I, that's perfect. Yeah, I know exactly what you're <laughs> talking about. And yeah, that'll be. Like, I had something like kind of mapped out, and I'm like, oh, that's. I'm going to switch that around and yeah, do that whole bit. Uh, which. Uh, I should have for you tomorrow, by the way. Man, I I another, to, morning, another morning message, you know? Yeah, it's another morning. Sweet. I need to go ahead and watch the Lighthouse, <laughs> I need to go ahead and watch the Lighthouse and Witch, which is crazy is actually I do have both of them on Blu-ray now. Well, <laughs> yeah, no, no I excuse. Them, go so. watch them right yeah. away. Yeah, it's, double uh, features right? for movies. It's yeah, a, a, a thing, fun I'm double sure. feature would be doing like the uh, Lighthouse and like The Shining, just like okay. you're stuck in a place yeah. you can't get out of it. Oh, um, yeah, shining, man. I mean, like, weirdly enough, like, Lighthouse was my favorite movie of last year. And for me, like, weirdly enough, even though it was made, like, well before the pandemic, it's like the ultimate lockdown movie. Like, oh, yeah, it just, yeah. 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 I actually really had good. COVID when I watched it. So, oh, wow. That's, <laughs> <what I was. laughs> that's, that's such a big experience. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that, so, yeah I mean, so, that, that reminds nothing. me of, like, when I, wa- when I was a kid, when I first watched The Ring. Or, or, or sorry, Ring because it was the Japanese version, like yeah. on VHS, which is the best way to watch. That's right? if you're gonna um, watch the movie, you're gonna watch it. Yeah. <laughs> and like I had like I, I was really ill with the flu, so I had this like high fever, and I was lying bedridden, and I put on like Ring to watch, like you know, like, <laughs> I'm, like you know, uh, I terrified. Was like, you know, I was, I was even more scared like, a week later. But <laughs> do, I was gonna be like, do I need to get a fever before I watch Lighthouse? Like you should, yeah. yes, yeah. Yeah. absolutely yeah. should. I do. You're fine. Go, 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 yeah. lick some light posts. And take I, it. I, <laughs> yeah. Go to a school just for a little bit. Yeah. yeah, I'll just go to school. I'll just go to an elementary school around here. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but yeah, those movies. Uh, but I also love like I mentioned Dead Alive or like, like Dead Alive. Kind of, uh, I think Dead Alive and Grindhouse probably uh, influenced mm. me for at least gore in, in all yeah. these. Um, like uh, there's like especially uh, in uh, Grindhouse and Planet Terror. Like the the first the best. Uh, the first time, it, like it's like a standoff between um, I forget the guys. It's the guy from Lost and Bruce Willis's team, and they're like, "That's it!" And he shoots a dude, and it just goes <laughs> like it's not just like I've seen millions of gunshots in millions of movies, and but this was just stupid. <laughs> I mean, it was just. But and I'm like, every time I draw a comic, it's so get shot. I'm doing wow, like it's there's like, you guys. It's just plenty of splatter in your work alex yeah. like pl- like i love it i'm just like yeah <laughs> so yeah and then like dead alive is just so it's such a oh. gonzo like it's not even a scary movie it's just like all right well how do they do that like I, i'm not scared of it it's 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 gross and it's great <laughs> but uh yeah. i do top fives every sunday night on my rock and robbie live show and yeah. i've been doing this thing where i go through each year from the yeah. 80s into the 90s of my top five favorite movies of that year i just did oh, 1992 nice had to put dead alive on there oh yeah i was yeah. like i don't care what else came yeah. out like dead yeah. alive's on the top five that the the, the, the lawnmower and just oh like, yeah it's just like cool yeah, and they're just like chucking like hamburger or whatever they have stuff yeah. have you yeah. seen that yet brian uh no I'm, it's called oh, brain oh, dead and something uh, like john like john may know it as brain dead i'm not sure but like oh brain oh yeah well yeah, but i know it's brain dead um yeah. i kind of well, well, i'm aware of i'm aware of it is dead alive but like, you know brain dead is what i saw as like you know like for me it's such a great movie like for me it's not even like the zombies and the you know like the sort of death scenes the, the most disgusting thing in that movie for me is when like the kind of decrepit like zombies sat at the table and they're trying to pass yes. it off as like you know and the, the big boil Pops and the oh, pus yeah, and, it goes like and pus lands in the right? person's soup, yeah. and then like they say, like, mm, you know, like, I, I, mean, was like, what? No, it's like, I was, I was <laughs> watching that, and like, I get I saw it for the first time when I was like in my mid 20s. Like, uh, my brother and I would always, uh, 
every October we would always get together and we would always watch specifically movies that we have like horror movies that we haven't seen. So like it wasn't like let's get together and watch like Halloween again or like something like that. It was always like I've never heard of this or like I've heard this is supposed to be good. Let's watch it. Um, and that was one of them. And my poor sister in law like was in there, <laughs> and she was like. Yeah, I'll watch the movie, but I'm not really into like gory stuff. I'm more like, oh, this, like, oh, you know, like well, we don't man. know what this is, so it, it, we'll see what it is. I mean, it, hell, the cover with the mouth and like a little face in the mouth. Like, but I just, I, 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 I just love the little touch. Like first, that that random kung fu priest who shows up, like one I know, scene, I know, you know like, cast for the Lord, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, alone watching it, and I was like, that's what Peter Jackson is great. Though he's great at introducing, like you know single you know like small characters to steal a movie like i think i could probably talk about one of my i've said this before one of my all-time favorite characters in any movie like ever like you know in terms of, like my favorite performances in cinema history is jeffrey combs is milton special agent milton dammers and the flighteners oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like I, I'm obsessed with that character, like you know, and I've wanted to like make a comic with like my version of that character, like going back years, like you know, I just oh, think he's amazing. So we're um, just want to do this. So right now, my wife and I, we uh, we've been doing these movie brackets for like last like couple of years, and um, we made one up for uh, for right now for the Halloween season, and uh, but we broke it up into uh, we're to do four movies, but from uh, decades. So like we started like uh, four movies from like the twenties, and I think we kind of lumped it. Yeah, it was twenties and the thirties, forties, fifties, so on and so forth, right? And um, and right now we're, we're, I feel like we're speeding through, but we're like in the seventies right now, and um, it's it's so weird going from like the like the silent movies, which were like more on par with what they're doing like nowadays, and it's like I'm not gonna say like the. Yeah, Frighteners. Yeah, I Frighteners is what we got for – I'm looking forward to in the 90s, which I haven't seen Frighteners in forever. I'm, I'm psyched for it. Um, but, like, it's so weird seeing, like, those uh, early, like, silent movies, like um, – and, like, kind of going into, like, the first talkies. So you're going, like, from uh, – like, obviously, like, Nosferatu and stuff like that. But uh, uh, I saw for the first time a movie, Vampire, which I, I've never heard of. The, the black and, and white with, silent with film, right? You're talking yeah, about the black, yeah. yeah, that well, movie. It's, it's like it's like in between. It was like the year, like you know, jazz singer just came out. So like, all right, let's yeah. get some voices in here. That and movie so is there's a lot of is, like, still like the place cards with a lot of reading, but yeah. there's still some like dialogue. And but that some, movie's brilliant, bro. It's so creepy. Yeah. It's, it's oh, like it's, it's so this good. eerie atmosphere that yeah. like permeates it. Like it's it's a there's a Criterion version of that film out yeah. there. It's so yeah, it's, it's on HBO Max. That's where we watch it. Nice, yeah. nice, and um. Like there's one early spot where like we're trying to figure out like why is this why is this room creepy, and it was just for the fact that uh, this is like a 1920s movie, but we're seeing a ceiling, and it's just that kind of like you know you didn't really see a ceiling until uh, Hitchcock and like in the 60s because <laughs> you know everybody had their floodlights and all that junk up there, and just the fact that this guy was walking in a room with a ceiling it was just like it's funny how like it was like that's revolutionary look what they're doing. And like they had like the camera like upside down, and they were doing it was just insane. I get a lot of uh, German expressionism from your work. I don't know if that's intentional, but I get that from your work. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. It's I'm a horror guy, and that, that yeah. German expression is so dug into horror movies. Then um, you, you know. can't help but have it as an influence, right? Sure. Like, I, 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 yeah. I I'm I'm from the '90s. We all grew up with Tim Burton. <laughs> We uh, yeah, right. <laughs> and that's, like, even if like you know like you aren't directly yeah. aware of the influence of German expressionism, odds are your favorite horror director was influenced by German expressionism. So like you know you've got it filtered through. Like, you know it's right in the DNA yeah. of horror. Excuse me a second. I hear crying. I'll be right. All right. I uh, yeah. I was gonna say like he's got a lot in his basement. E even if you've never watched the Doctor of the the Cabinet of Doctor Caligari, and yeah. if you watch Tim Burton films, you kind of know that aesthetic. Right, you kind of yeah. get to it. So, yeah, all right, John. Exactly. Uh, while we're waiting on Alex to come back, Brian, think about some of your final thoughts and questions that you want to get on going right here. But John, let's go ahead and do it one more time. We got Crimson Cage. We got Hotel Volume Two coming yeah. out in December. Yep. So Crimson Cage and Hotel Volume Two both launch in December. Both of them are available at your um, available for pre-order and previews this month, going into the month of October. Um, so I think the catalog just came out now, so that'll be what's out through October. So go to your local comic shop, um, let them know you want um, 
hotel ordered. They'll let them know you want Crimson Cage ordered. Um, please help. Please spread the word. You know, um, get that buzz going. Like every like interested, you know, supportive shop makes a difference, especially like at our level, at the Canindy level. So like, please like do get the word out there. And in December, please do go to the shops and pick up these books. Yeah, I uh, I plan on doing advanced reviews of these if I'm allowed to. But I'll you go are ahead allowed. And... That's what. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. I will go ahead and tell you this. You have my permission. It's got my seal of approval. Like you need, if you liked Hotel Volume One, you ain't seen nothing yet, and and you got to <laughs> check out. If you're a fan of of Sync or any other work from Alex or John, you definitely need to check out Crimson Cage. If you're a wrestling fan, even if you're not a wrestling fan, even if you're not a Shakespeare fan, this is something that I think you will really dig into if you like really good comics. You know, if you like what I recommend here, what me and Brian talk about on the channel. If you like the creators we bring in, you definitely need to check out these books. They are amazing. What's it been like to work with AWA? Yeah, it's been fun. Like, you know, yeah. it's yeah, no, like the fact, like you know that, um, like because, like obviously, like you know, my Alex and I have obviously done a lot of like work, like you know, essentially, you know, like comics tribe are great, but all of that's very kind of like you know, you're still working on your own. Essentially, it's very kind of like loose, you know, like you know, it's very informal the setups. Mm -hmm. So it's weird yeah. having like a company with like so many resources. Like I remember like when it was like the last the last time me and I was at New York Comic Con 2019 before the world ended. Um, <laughs> like, you know, we, we were able to go and visit, like, AWA, like, at their studio. They have a literal studio, like, in yeah. Manhattan. And you're able to go up to, like, you know, the elevators, like, and it's a whole floor and they have a whole staff, like, yeah. you know, of editorial, like, That's you know, like old school, bro. Like, oh, yeah. you know, they have the bullpen, good, like, yeah. they have, like, you know, like, a legal team, they have, like, you know, all that stuff, and you're able to go to different various departments, and, you know, the, the mark, you know, the graphic design yeah. for the covers, you know, and they're able to, like, talk about the different ways that your book's going to get marketed and developed, you know, and it is, like, a really polished setup, and, like, you know, having, like, so much talent involved um, is really exciting, like, you know, and having that level of support behind your work, like, you know, it's it makes a difference. Hit the wrong button. Yeah, it does. AWA uh, does some great work, and I'm so pumped um, that we got more hotel and we got Crimson Cage. Because y'all, I'm, I'm telling y'all, you don't even freaking know. Brian, final thoughts and questions, man. Let's get them going. Well, uh, I did want to also bring up that you guys did a little piece in the, uh, or you know one of the short pieces in this. Oh yeah, made. we did. Yeah. I thought so, you were about to give us credit for making it, which I was gladly going to take. Yeah, like, like yep, yeah, that's right. that's right. Yeah. We did. <laughs> Happy belated birthday, Joe Mulvey. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, this is great stuff. I, did, I, you know, you know, go pick this up too. So uh, yeah, no, but, really, yeah. Really, like, Joe, Joe Mulvey's one of my favorite people in comics. Rich Stewart's one of my favorite people in comics. Yeah. Like you know, the, them together is like a nice flavor. Um, and yes, yeah, so it was fun doing a little story in the back and adding to that world. I've seen that book develop from its earliest stages, from like yeah. script through its final book, and it's a fantastic comic. I love comics, tribe. I love what they do, obviously. So um, yeah, like if you liked all the rest of our stuff, go check that out as well. True. Yeah, they. Yeah, Thank they, you, Colin. Uh, I think mean, Richard Young recently did another <laughs> kick. Uh, recently did another Kickstarter for Happy Hill, and and uh, I actually picked yeah. up the uh, uh, Mr. Dig enamel pin. By the way, as one of the oh, extras yeah. on that. So. <laughs> I've, I've, so. not, I've not even got a Mr. Dig enamel pin. I'm jealous. Oh, <laughs> well, I got one. I will show it off. <laughs> uh, Ryan, you're gonna have to send it over. You have to send it over to Scotland, man. I don't know what shipping's like. But I'm sure it's easy, right? Anyway, I'll uh, figure it out. Yes. Figure it out. Figure it out. <laughs> Before we dip no, like, out, since Brexit, it's like some kind of Mad Mad Max style journey again. <laughs> Before we dip out, I got two questions. Final for Alex. Alex, not being from Glasgow, like, what was it like yeah. trying to portray that world in sync? And did he did he do a good job, John? Because I think he did. But I've never been there. Well, he took me there. So, yeah, I, so I, I, brought, I brought Alex to Glasgow yeah. and I gave him a oh, tour of the city. Cool. Yeah, so what happened? Did you was, take him um, to the seedy areas? You're yeah, like, this is uh, where the this uh, is where the blue bus parks. Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, so, like, yeah, I'll let you go. Yeah. So All right, well, yeah. what happened was so we, um, it was right before my son, who you just saw running around, uh, right? Like, my wife was pregnant with him, and uh, we're like, oh, well, like, before, like, like one of those, like. I don't know what you would even call it, baby honeymoon. Anyways, we were uh, we were going out and like this is probably the last time for a long time before we do anything. So we like let's go to the UK and we'll see John and it'll be great. And so uh, 
we like we kind of popped all over the place but when we were in glasgow like that night uh i read out loud uh the script the sync one to my wife <laughs> and like and that and it says that's the book we're working on and that's where he's taking us tomorrow it's john i'm sure john will look out for us <laughs> uh, you yeah, know, because obviously, when you look at me, you think this is something no one's going to mess with. Yes. So, like, you know, <laughs> right, you, you know. so, like, <laughs> so we went for a walk into like this, uh, and like to, to me, being from Massachusetts, I thought like, oh, this, this is not so bad. It looks like Worcester, you know, and um, and I just looking around, it's fine, and just uh, so I look like such a schmuck. So I had like uh, my camera and, <laughs> the I was shorts and, and everything, the like to get ideas of like, <laughs> all right, this is what I'm going to draw later. So I look like some jerk American, like click, 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 click. Wow, this is great. Look, look at that guy. He's just, like, click, click. Hi, how are you? I'm from America. Click, click. <laughs> like a real it was like a straight, a thousand stripe shot. It would have been complete. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> I like, I like I like a zoom up pants, hand yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so um, so we went all around that area and. Um, and we were uh, talking. No, to... so I took him on the walk from Sink One. I said, "Okay, Alan starts here at the start yep, of this. Yeah, issue, so and we we'll take the walk this character takes, the yeah. route he takes through." So yeah. I remember, like specifically, cool. when we're drawing it, like, all right, make sure our character's facing the right way. From like, all right, we want to get this landmark in here, this landmark right here, um, and um, I, and yeah. So I want I wanted to make sure, like, all right, everybody in Glasgow's like, hey, this you know this guy did it did it right, instead nice. of like doing like. You know, like like they do in movies where like New York is like it's supposed to be New York, but they're filming in like Ontario or whatever. And um, oh, I don't think enough filming in Glasgow like happens a lot yes. of time. <laughs> <laughs> but so um so yeah, so I, I didn't realize that the area's that bad until we uh we were doing like a uh I think it was like maybe an interview or we were doing like commentary. I, know, like, I was commentary for one of the issues we did it with my friend Ashley. Yeah, yeah so so Ashley was there and uh it we were like looking at the pages like on the screen. And it was like a like a uh, shot of like their like uh, Simon McCready's car driving down the road or something. And she was like, "Wait a minute, I know that area. I know exactly where that is." And I said, "Oh yeah, I took a picture from it. And I basically just drew right from that picture." And she's like, "Wait a minute, you went there?" And like she's like, "John, <laughs> like, this area with his pregnant wife. What's the matter?" With you? And I'm like, wait, 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 was it that bad? I well, I, thought, well, I figured like you know, Ashley, you know, Ashley, dirty, but you were with the camera. Worst case scenario, I would have run away and I would have been got away. I would have been going to go away, you know. So. <laughs> See, that's, cool that, that, that's cool that you got brought out there though to check it out because to yeah. be honest i even told brian not too long i was like i think alex is scottish i'm not sure i think they're both yeah. scottish right i no, I, no. I might have scottish heritage i don't even know <laughs> yeah right it's funny how, well, as it came out of the joke so... and people will call alex alex mccormick and assume that yeah. he's scottish well, <laughs> when, I, when i was in scotland it was the first time i didn't have to spell cormac like we were checking a hotel, I was like, "It's Cormac C or M A C," and they're like, "I know how to spell Cormac, pal." I'm like, "They don't in the over here, but all right." I love it. All right, one more question before we get to Brian's final thoughts and questions. But Alex, have you ever seen a ghost, a UFO, any kind of supernatural experience that you'd like to talk about? <laughs> Maybe it happened. He's looking, like, he's looking like he's like none that I want to talk about. That's not his expression. He says. Yeah, there's, I I think I could tell this without dropping any names. Um, and I I've been dead myself. for three months. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so uh, what happened was, um, uh, my old day job, I used to de deliver medical equipment to uh, hospitals, and um, and what was going on is it was like you know like plates and screws that type of stuff, right? Yeah. And um. Uh, I was asked to come in on a uh, like a demonstration of one of these things to take pictures, and uh, it was to do put like uh, like plates on feet, like on feet, like so. If you broke your toe, you, you would go in and you put a little plate on your toe. And as far as I know, I mean, I was the guy dropping the stuff off. I wasn't a, like the professional anyway. So I get in there and they bring out like a Tupperware bin, and it's full of feet. <laughs> it's just like chopped off cadaver feet. And um, as far as anything like that would be in a horror movie, that's probably as close as I've ever become. That's crazy. Here, here's <laughs> yeah. a bucket of feet. Like, yep, here they are. Oh, 
my and, god. And um a bucket of feet since they were like low end version of like, you know, what was that a basket full of heads, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really sequel. lousy sequel. It's like that's yeah. what's funny in the series. I just like, like a big, a a big KFC bucket, you know, yeah. with like you know, ten you know. <laughs> The old bucket of feet. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love a bucket but, of feet. Uh, yeah, but um, but that office that I used to work to, yeah, it would it would give me the creeps. Oh, there was a great story. Uh, I'll tell you really fast um, that uh, the school that I went to, my art school, uh, I swear to God, was haunted. Like I never saw anything, but I mean, it just gave you the creeps being there, like nothing else, right? And um, one day I was working, and where the animation studio was, it was in the basement. And for whatever reason, they painted all the walls black to make it even extra creepier. So anyways, um, I was down there and it was like the middle of the night and I was working and my wife, uh, who, my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, um, she said, hey, I'm across the street. Um, like, how's your day going? But I didn't know is she wasn't across the street. She just walked into the building at that moment. <laughs> and then she snuck into the studio and got behind me and started crawling like this. Like, you know, <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, things are going good. I'm animating this. And I threw my phone there. And I'm like, ah! And I, just, I missed her, but she was like, ah! And that's how you knew she was the one. Yep. I was like, that's my one. <laughs> there you go. I love it. Brian, oh, my God. final thoughts or questions, man? <sighs> well, um, you know, last time we spoke, John, uh, uh, we uh, ended up talking about uh, – uh, Naoki uh, Urosawa and the 20th Century Boys and oh yeah that. yeah um, yeah I gotta yeah, I gotta get um, on that stuff yeah <laughs> man uh, well yeah that's part of where I was going uh, you know uh, uh, yeah that one's really good and I I did read uh, Pluto a couple weeks ago basically in one sitting by the way uh, it was a yeah, very yeah. nice day outside I was able to it. sit outside yeah. and do that um, but I was wondering <laughs> has has any of his work uh, you know influencing anything you're doing or you well. Know, it's quite interesting because obviously, like I'm only a kind of relatively recent convert to like Naoki Urasawa. Um, that was like about my problem. The one of the highlights of like you know, 2020 and like the lockdown pandemic year was like just getting like heaps of Urasawa manga. Like I'd I'd, I'd never I think I'd even heard of him until I read 20th Century Boys for the first time last summer, and then from there I got into Monster and into Pluto. And the funny thing is, I. I, over in my newsletter and my Patreon page, I did like a project, uh, my top 100 comics of all time. Mm. And I thought I had a pretty solid list laid out. And then I started reading Naoki Urasawa, Naoki Urasawa and um, it totally upended the list. Now, like, three of the books in the top 10 are like Urasawa <laughs> books. Like, you know, 20th Century Boys, Monster, and Pluto are all in there now. And there's a couple of other ones like Lord Down in the list as well. Um, but yeah, like, I think he's just one of the best storytellers ever. In terms of like influence, it's hard to say because none of the stuff that's coming out, like, all the stuff that's coming out now is stuff that I've been working on since before I read Urasawa. But when I look at some of the stuff I've been developing and pitching this year, I can definitely see, like, you know, the, like, Urasawa influence. Like, one of the stories I pitched definitely feels like there's, like, a Pluto element in there. Another one definitely has, like, an Urasawa, sorry, a 20th Century Boys element in there. And I can definitely see, like, just in terms of, like, I think he tells stories in a way that's better than just about, like, anybody in comic or anybody in any medium, pretty much. Like, just the whole idea of, like, starting with a very simple human core, um... And then, like, I love how, like, it brings in a supporting cast, like, you know, like, and minor characters get developed and gonna get fleshed out. I just love that whole idea. The thing is that, like, in the current climate of American comics, where we have, like, a five-issue miniseries, it's hard to kind of do that to the degree that Urasawa does it. But um, if I can kind of capture some kind of, like, shred of that in my own work at some point in the future, I'd be very happy indeed. Nice. Yeah. I yeah, still haven't read I, yeah. 20th Century Boys. Brian, Brian yeah, wasn't all up about it. Yeah, I still I, have. I I'm just try, I'm trying to get into more manga. I actually got this uh, Shaman King, which uh, has been recommended to me oh. by my buddies uh, Cam and Brooks. So I'm that's a nice big hefty book. That's something you could kill yeah. someone with. Yeah, no kidding. There's like there's <laughs> like a few of these, right? So like, yeah. 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 I I, you may want to start with Pluto. I, I don't know. It, I don't know. Do you uh, know me? 20th Century Boys is amazing, but it is it is. Uh, a little longer. It's a long read. <laughs> well, let yeah. me borrow your copy, Brian. Come on. I, I will do that. I will Stop do that, being but... stingy. I don't know what's going on here, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you haven't asked yet. I'll bring it. I'll Brian's bring like, it. you've had my Illuminatus trilogy for like five years, bro. I'm not letting you borrow anything. <laughs> yeah. 
So that's fine. I At that copy. point, it becomes your book. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's right. That's what, yeah, that's for five that's years. Just, you know. Well, yeah. Anyway, Next time John, I come over, I'll write to Robbie in the front page. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and sign it and everything. That'd be great. All right, yeah, John, Alex, thank you I'll so much for joining us. Hey, today. thank you so much for having us on. And you I out there in the chat. With you. Yeah, and you and I out love there. The interaction. You out there in the chat watching on the replay, let us know in the comments down below. Just throw us a station if you want to see John and Alex come back because Sync 3 is on the horizon. And I just look for any excuse to bring these cats back because okay. I love John and now I love Alex even more. So yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. So, John, <laughs> tell everybody where they can find you on socials and all that yeah. stuff. You can find me on Twitter at John Lee's927, where I will regularly be talking about like whatever wrestling's on the telly and occasionally talk about comics as well <laughs> um <laughs> and um you'll find me on patreon at patreon.com forward slash john lees where um i will regular i regularly update with like weekly free essays and also post behind the scenes stuff about sync mm. and um I, like a short story every month as well or you can find me on my newsletter, um, which is a weekly thing that goes out full of like news and updates and cool stuff. And you can find that at deepender.johnleescomics.com. That's deep-ender.johnleescomics.com. You sign up and you'll get a stack of free comics in your inbox right away. Then right after that, you'll get like once a week a new missive from yours truly. That it's was a newsletter before it was cool. Yeah, it's a great right. newsletter, and it's not <laughs> on Substack. It's not behind a paywall or nothing like that. You can no. John John's newsletter is great, and uh, if he does send two out in a week, you don't need to like make a big scathing <laughs> negative review about that, right, or anything like that. Right? Uh, once a week for me is like just a sweet spot. Once it gets twice a week, you know it's not threatening. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, why don't you tell us where everybody where they can find you? Sure. Uh, yeah, I've, I'm also on Twitter at Alex Cormack number four. The reason why it's Alex Cormack four is because I was the fourth guy named Alex Cormack to sign up. Um, and I never you're not changing it. Did you get the rest of them? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, That's the fans of four. <laughs> oh, no. uh, but uh, so, yeah, so I'm there. I'm on Instagram. Uh, again, my name, Alex Cormack. Uh, it's, it's either artist or illustrator. I don't remember, <laughs> but uh, l- look for this face. Illustrator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Extraordinary. Um, and I'm also on Patreon too. Uh, it's just my name, Alex Cormack. I'm Patreon, and I got uh, some behind the scenes stuff. I got some comics that have never seen the light of day. I've seen like uh, lately. I've been putting up some sketch covers, um, and um, yeah, I'm sure I'm on Facebook too. <laughs> so. You How do you spell today, Adam? So it's like that. C O R M A C K. Ask the Scots. They all know. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the other four Alex Cormacks on uh, Twitter, are obviously yeah. Scottish, right? They got yeah, be. they got to be. Yeah. That's <laughs> how I was able to kill, kill them so easily because they're local. They're, yeah, they're right down the street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's seven more after me that are also all local. <laughs> yeah. Brian, tell us what well, you're doing. Like best, best to make assurance double sure, and we'll, we'll kill them yeah. as well. <laughs> Alex Cormac 5 shall not live. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, where is that guy? <laughs> Brian, where can we find you? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, Instagram and Twitter. I'm, I'm at Chewy Brain. Not too terribly active, but uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Or, you know, some of these videos. By the way, that station comment I'm going to get. Was that a Bill and Ted reference? I hope. Yes. It is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're all it worked so it. hard to get that to become a saying. <laughs> you know, I actually had uh, Chris Matheson, who was the uh, co-writer of the Bill and Ted franchise, son of oh, Richard yeah. Matheson, right? I had, oh, him yeah, on, yeah. I had him on the channel, and we were talking about his book he did, Story of Buddha. And it's a, right. like a scathing criticism of Buddhism. And then before that, he did The Story of God, which was a scathing criticism of Judeo-Christian mm-hmm. stuff, right? But it's not, it's not really so much as... A, it's a retelling of it from the perspective of the actual material. Right. Anyway, when he came on the show, we, we hadn't like really gotten into this whole station thing, right? Like it's taken over comics, YouTube. Now everybody's throwing stations up 
and people are always like, what's station mean? And I, first of all, Alex, I appreciate that you, you got the reference. Yeah. Um, but I can't wait to have Chris back on the show. Could you imagine what it'd be like for him now? If like the chat was, was filled with station. stations before yeah. he came up there. <laughs> that, come, that went a, lot, a much more wholesome direction. I was expecting when you said I had Chris Matheson, I thought you were going to say, send me a cease and desist. Tell me to stop his <laughs> station. <laughs> <laughs> I came like, oh, much better. Stop using station. It was a it was a drunk mistake. It was honest. It was an honest mistake. Anyway. <laughs> All right. You can find us here at PCP, of course. Like I said, Horror Fest. We're right in the middle of it. Ooh. We got a fantastic lineup. We've already done some great movies. The Good entire stuff, Hellraiser yeah. franchise. The Burbs. Oh, wow. Fright Night One and Two. For the poll winner, we had 28 days later. We did John Carpenter's Vampires. Didn't age mm. so well. Yeah. Anyway, one last you know, recommendation you know. for you if you want one because I, I never gave one check out a movie it's on Shudder called Dead and Buried I'm obsessed with it right now um, which one? go find it it's a, it's a lost gem from the 80s called Dead and Buried it's from the, it's from the screenwriters of Alien it came out I think in 80, 81, 82 maybe it's <laughs> genuinely scary and unnerving really good super underrated um, it's fantastic you know I just nice. saw a poster for that that must have been from you did you put up yeah, a probably poster? Was, yeah. Yeah, probably right. was, yeah. I guess, yeah. Uh, like what you mentioned, the writers of the Alien, like I Dan O'Bannon, right? And uh, yep. the other guy. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I just uh, signed up for Shudder, Shudder to watch uh, Haunt. So I'll definitely yeah, check cool. it out. Friday night, that's tomorrow <laughs> night, 9 p.m. Central Time. Join us for Horror Fest, The Fun House by Toby Hooper. What's a Toby Hooper, Brian? Uh, he's a director, I've heard. Uh, I'm getting familiar. Sorry. Brian will be there for Funhouse. Very excited for that. And then (laughs) Aunt over at Dylan's Horror Show on Saturday. That movie is great. Anyway, Alex, John, Brian, thank you all so much. PCP Army, thank you so much. We are dipping out. Y'all buy Crimson Cage. Buy Sync if you haven't already. Check out every bit of work. Buy (laughs) Hotel, (laughs) buy Mountain Head. Rota Bones. Bones, uh, Rota Bones. Bones. Sky of Blood coming soon. You just wait and see. Yeah, Sky of Blood, right? Yeah, (laughs) The trilogy. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, 